-hmm. And then so I, so then in here, I like anything that's paper or whatever. Um, I throw in there, uh, corner of the cob, whatever, mm -hmm. and you know, give it a couple turns, and then. So this is the, supposed to be the second one. Mm -hmm. So you take whatever is all mixed up in this first one and you put it in the second one. Good morning, my loves. Do you want to know what we're doing today? A couple of weeks ago, I called up a friend from my university. During my four years, she was extremely supportive. She was involved with the Latinx community. And she was an incredible woman that I could look up to while I was studying and suffering and crying at 3 a.m. So in this conversation, she mentioned this guy who in partnership with his wife had been able to only take out trash like once a quarter while they were really, really committed. They had made a lot of changes for their household, for their family, to help out in whichever way they could. So to reduce plastic, to reduce their waste, and many other ways that I don't even know about yet. So that's where we're gonna go today. We're gonna go meet Chris. A lot of the things that he and his wife had tried to do that allowed them to take out trash only once a quarter, they had to stop doing because they have a full life. They have children, they have full-time jobs. Time is always a constraint and so is money. Therefore, you have to at some point realize what is sustainable for your life and what isn't. Today, we will be learning what was sustainable and not sustainable for Chris and his family here in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. We you know, have to give credit right off the start to my wife who is at work today. She is the one that was the driver for much of this. It's all been about reducing the waste and it's been easy to do things incrementally. Uh, I think what it really started was watch this movie called The Clean Bin Project. The Clean Bin Project is a documentary filled with comedy that follows a regular couple in their quest to produce the least amount of garbage in a year, hence the name Clean Bin. It features interviews with marine pollution expert Captain Charles Moore and TET lecturer Chris Jordan. And at the end of the you know 12 months they you know they assess they look at what they made what waste they made they have a higher awareness mm -hmm. and they decide what they can take forward so you know that really had a big impact on us one thing to emphasize is it's a journey you're not going to be getting to that place where you make a you know ball jar worth of trash in a year right you know tomorrow or ever if you never get there that's okay so we kind of looked at our household after watching that and said well what could we change and you know it's low-hanging fruit at the beginning chris sent me the list of low-hanging fruit he and his wife identified that i think is an excellent starting point for all of us the first thing i love about it is that it's realistic and flexible focusing on reducing waste instead of preaching a zero waste lifestyle that is unachievable for many so let's go over the location-based category starting with while traveling on the go means you end up buying based on efficiency and availability so it's important to actively evaluate the packaging of food items in your supermarket, convenience stores, or takeout food. Consider creating a to-go bag with reusable containers, cloth napkins, reusable utensils, reusable water bottle, so that you can refuse disposable items. A lot of these can be found in collapsible forms, making them space efficient. Moving on to what work. Leave a reusable mug and water bottle at your desk that you can use throughout the day. Consider not using a personal printer or having a personal trash can in your office. For dry cleaning, research establishments that allow you to use a reusable clothing cover and even a reusable hanger. Or bring this idea to your local dry cleaners and encourage them to try it out. For lunch, bring your own plate, utensils and even cloth napkin. And last but not least, at home. Similar to all other locations, cloth napkins, reusable plates and reusable utensils are low hanging fruit. But take it a step further for gifting. Reuse bags from previous gifts or opt for cloth bags for the holidays and birthdays. Use cloth towels instead of paper towels and compost your organic items like vegetables, fruits, coffee grounds, cotton q-tips, pizza boxes, nail clippings, etc. And eliminate plastic trash bags if possible. Also, switch to shampoo, conditioner and soap bars as well as aluminum razors. The point of each of these changes is to avoid disposable items at all costs and opt for non-plastic reusable alternatives. I love this example of how much waste is produced by a school in a year. 
that's 40,000 pounds of waste that won't degrade for hundreds of years. So for the parents out there, consider packing waste-free lunches that both reduce waste and bring awareness to younger generations about sustainability. That was when our kids were young. Okay. Now they're, they're t teenagers. I also have a day job. I've always had a day yeah. job. This is not my day job. But it has to, in the end, just like you know, anything else that you want to continue, it has to fit into your lifestyle. Yeah. And you have to, I guess, be accepting of what is. It doesn't mean you like what is. Chris told me he had just taken out the trash. This is one of the two bins he takes out a month. And while they used to only take out one to two bins every three months, their current waste creation is still less than the average household. He called out that as a busy family, takeout was common, resulting in more styrofoam and plastic in his trash. However, starting in 2022, styrofoam and plastic bags will be banned in New Jersey as part of one of the nation's most wide-ranging bans on disposable plastic products. The ban calls out the nascent hemp growing industry in New Jersey, which would create products that can break down in 90 days versus the dozens of years that it takes petroleum-based plastic. For additional context on why this is critical for New Jersey, according to NorthJersey.com, the state is disproportionately affected by plastic pollution because it is surrounded on three sides by tidal waters in the most densely populated corner of the U.S. More than 80% of litter picked up at annual beach cleanups from Cape May to Sandy Hook by volunteers for Clean Ocean Action has been plastic in recent years. So what stuck? Like the napkins? Like we don't use paper towels. We try not to use straws. We have a lot of reusable straws. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I don't know if you like you go in a restaurant and you say no straw please, but you know, yes. the person that <laughs> takes the order is not the person that prepares the drink. You go to a store and you say no bag, they give you a bag anyway because they're so used to it, then they throw it away. Like Target. Right. You know, like, oh, I don't need the bag. Okay, I'll, then I'll throw it away. I'm like, no, I was like... Give it to someone else. You know, no, <laughs> well, you can't give it to someone else. Like, okay, I said no bag. What else am I supposed to say? Right. You know, we're not perfect. We're, I guess we're aware. I think my wife has had a lot of impact by example. It comes down to then how do you change behavior? My wife, she influenced just by doing. And people are like, oh, I want to be like Sherry. Like, oh, like, look, Sherry is... She's a model. Yeah, a model. And the, the, quietly, though, she's not, like, she's just doing it and then, right. you know, bring, bring your own reusable cup, right? Right. So it's not about scolding. Or... It's not about scolding. Yeah. I mean, we did do a lot of, you know, quiet, I guess, quiet activism in church. We, you know, got composting in Presbyterian Church of Lawrenceville down on uh, Route 206. So these are EnviroCycle.com. Okay. And so you can buy them on Amazon. And um, that's what we did. And they, you know, it's like, it's not raised up. It's a, I'll show you in a second. It's a two parts. There's a roller underneath and you can roll it. And uh, see there's little hole, there's li actually a slit, two slits. Right, two slits. Which is where the stuff, the liquid comes out. It's on these rollers, and this is like um, has an opening in the front. You can see, like you can open uh, it up. I see. So that's yeah. where all that's of where the T is. Uh -huh. So you align it with those. Uh, when it comes, it has little plugs and those holes, and you can open them. Uh, you know, one or more, depending on your preference. Mm -hmm. And then so I, so then in here, I like anything that's paper or whatever. Um, I throw in there, uh, corner of the cob, whatever, mm -hmm. and you know, give it a couple turns, and then so this is this supposed to be the second one. Mm -hmm. So you take whatever is all mixed up in this first one, and you put it in the second one. This has not been. Oh, I also put ashes in here, so it looks kind of strange from the fire pit. So you would put things from the actual like from the first one. I, I take a shovel of the mixed stuff and uh, put it I in see. here okay. and mix it around, and then do the same thing. I take this, you know shovel or more of this mm -hmm. stuff. And there's a third one <laughs> here that this is where the from the second one that would come in here. I'll use it for like if I want to repot a plant inside or something, but it really has to stay there. It takes a little while. That's really cool, and it really doesn't smell. And then you said you had the rain barrel. So the rain barrel, yeah. So it fills up um, mm -hmm. uh, with water, and then you know I have this little length of hose that I can fill up my um, five-gallon buckets with. 
You okay. can put another uh, rain barrel next to it if right. you wanted to. When it gets filled up, it just moves another to the one. Next one. Yeah, it just overflows otherwise. Um, is there anything fancy with the way that this is constructed? No, those are these are like pickle barrels. You can like go to like the Watershed Institute or different places. The important thing is to have a good uh, base mm -hmm. uh, because it's super heavy. You don't want it to uh, be falling. So right. and uh, to drain it in the winter. Oh, otherwise it freezes over. Otherwise and then, it freezes. Yeah. And um, for mosquitoes, either you have it completely, some of them are completely enclosed on the top, or this one's not enclosed, so I you pour some vegetable oil, and it makes a film on the top, and it's supposed to reduce the eggs. Chris wanted to acknowledge that there are a lot of problems to tackle, like over-purchasing of food, which is not solved by composting. But his point was that you can choose one thing that works for you and go from there. Make it a game to bring your reusable mug and utensils, and share these habits with friends to be more accountable. What's important is to try. And in the spirit of trying and sharing with friends, Chris would like to offer everyone in the area the ability to drop off their organic waste in his composting bin. Because he pays to be part of Lawrenceville's curbside organic collection program, his bin is collected regularly. If you are interested in access to his compost bin or anyone else's, simply download the Share Waste app and contact the person to get drop-off information. And with that, I say goodbye. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe.